أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبد الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم I'm Mubarak. We give open testimony. There is only one God, Allah, who stands alone with our partners or associates. It is he alone who deserves our worship. We further acknowledge that Muhammad, the prophet to whom the Quran was revealed, is Allah's messenger, his slave servant, and then he is the seal of the prophets. We pray the prayers of peace be upon Muhammad, the prophet, and all the righteous servants that follow him. It's my prayer as always, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides my speech and my tongue, prevents me from errors and mistakes. I acknowledge before I begin that any good that may come from what I say is from Allah. Any mistakes that I make on my own, I ask for his forgiveness for those mistakes in advance, that he leads me to a better understanding so that I won't make them again. And and again, acknowledging that any good that my, I might say again is from Allah. So we say, Alhamdulillah, 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 He Rabbil Alameen. Believers, uh, we're grateful to Allah for blessing us with another uh, day of Salatul Jumu'ah. We pray that the benefit from this day uh, is seen and reflected in our actions and deeds once we leave here, inshallah. Look, I'm very happy. I'm very happy um, that I walked in on Fahim saying what he was saying. That was for me a strong confirmation. And whenever Allah gives you a confirmation and you pay an attention, then it should make you feel good. And then I say that it was a confirmation because what I had prepared to discuss and what I came in here and Fahim was saying was almost right, right, right in the same space. And that was just confirmation for me that what Allah was guiding, guiding me towards today was really where I needed to be. So praise be to Allah. I intended to start uh, every every once in a while. I'll begin my kutbah by reciting Al-Fatiha. Uh, you don't see that happening often, but we understand that Al-Fatiha is the opening uh, of the Quran, the first surah in the Quran, and it is part of our daily salah. In fact, scholars say without Al-Fatiha, your prayer is not complete. And even if you didn't know any other surahs in Quran, if you could recite Al-Fatiha, you could just repeat Al-Fatiha. Why? Because Al-Fatiha is considered to be the nucleus or the summation of the whole Quran. In those seven ayats, Allah touches on all of the different ideas that are presented to us throughout this whole book. And you see how important that is? That in those seven ayats of Al-Fatiha, Allah touches on everything that is mentioned throughout the whole book. You see how thick this book is? <laughs> you see how thick this book is? In those seven ayats, all of this is present, which means if you've never seen that before, if you've never realized that before, perhaps you should give more consideration to those seven ayats of, Al of, of Al Fatiha. So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Awmideen Iyaki Na'abudu wa Iyaki Nasta'in Ehdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeen Sirat Al-Ladhina Anamta Alayhim Ghayri Al-Mahdubi Alayhim Walid Dalim Ameen God in this Surah Al-Fatiha begins by telling us some very specific things about himself. He begins by saying that he is Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, correct? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. With God's name or with God's help, who is Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. Two attributes of God that he first introduces us, uh, introduces us to about himself. Even when Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received revelation from God, Allah didn't first, Allah didn't first introduce himself to uh, Muhammad the Prophet as I am Allah, I am your God. Allah actually began with Muhammad the Prophet 
by introducing him to another one of his attributes, which comes next in this, this, these first phrases of Al-Fatiha. He reduced him, introduced himself as Arab. He introduced himself as the Lord, the God who creates, right? But in Al-Fatiha, God begins by giving us two distinct attributes of himself, that he is Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. And it's important to me for us to note that Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim both are tied and have a, have a connection in God's mercy. Both of them express different types of mercy that God has on his creation. And specifically us as people. When God says that he is Ar-Rahman, he is telling you that he is a merciful creator. He is a merciful benefactor. He is a merciful provider. He is a merciful sustainer, right? He is all, he, he is the utmost in showing mercy and giving, uh, in a way that we could never measure how much he gives to his creation. And even in our Rahim, he is still saying that he is these, the same for people, but the distinction between the two is, that Ar-Rahman describes a mercy that God gives to everything he created, whether it knows it or not, whether it deserves it or not, God still gives it anyway. An example for us is of Ar-Rahman is that every single day that you wake up in the morning, that is an example of Ar-Rahman. You didn't do nothing <laughs> to make it happen. You didn't know whether it was going to happen. You don't know if you deserve to be here another day, if God intended for you to be here another day, but somehow your eyes still open and you get a chance to experience another day, Ar-Rahman. You get it? That there are some, you breathe, you, have, you can see. You can walk, you can talk, all these things in mercy, the oxygen, your body works and your mind is cre communicating with your body so it does what it needs to do without you even thinking about it. That's Ar-Rahman, that's mercy from God, that very specific kind that you get regardless. And even as people, again, there are mercies we get in life that you know you, you look, I, I can't tell you what you deserve or not, but, but you can say, you can say, I know you can, cause I can. And there's been times when you felt you didn't deserve no mercy, no help from God, and he gave it to you anyway. You can identify a time when that happened in your own life. I don't know a human being that can't. That's Ar-Rahman. And then there's our Rahim. This is an attribute of God that he gives to people because they earned it. Because they deserved it. Because they went above and beyond. They did something extra that was pleasing to God that made them a recipient of a special kind of mercy that comes from him. And God introduces himself to us in Al-Fatiha as Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. I am both to you. I give to you indiscriminately, whether you deserve it or not. And I give a special reward to those who deserve it. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And then God goes on to say that he is what I just said. <laughs> he said, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. He says, we're following the logic. So, because I am to you your provider, your sustainer, the one that holds you up, the one that gives and, 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 and everything that you need is provided for you, whether you deserve it or not, 
And I am the one who also gives to you when you deserve a special reward. It comes from me. Then Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise then belongs to me, God, the Rob of all, Rob of all of the worlds, the Lord of all of the worlds. Do you know that Lord also means the teacher of all? Because uh, we we also say we say Rob Bil Alameen is Lord of all the worlds, but we also find it translated as Lord of all systems of knowledge. So God, Rob, God is not just the Lord, the one who created you, that made you, but God is also your ultimate teacher. He taught men, men, women, everything that we were before not knowing. How do I know that? Because God says that in Quran, that he taught man that which he was before not knowing. You find that also in the first revelation that he gave to Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Surah uh, Iqra. He taught man that which he was before not knowing. So God says, be said, now you understand this about me? All praise should be for me, God. Not to, not to that guy, not to Dr. Phil, not to Oprah, not for your professor over there, not for the scholar, not for your praise belongs with God, who is the source of everything that you know. And then he could proceed to say that he is, again, as a reminder, the merciful benefactor. And the merciful redeemer. He redeems you. He's the one who accepts your repentance. He's the one who ultimately gives forgiveness. He's the one that gives you another chance. For as long as you hear. And then further reminds you that he is Maliki al Medin. He is the sole judge on the day that we will be raised and held to account for all of the things that we did or did not do in this life that we should have or should not have done. He is the sole judge on that day. I could, I may as well finish. I don't want to take too much time. But I'll, I'm going to go ahead and finish. And after reminding us that he is the sole judge on the day of accountability, then he says, it denies al -mustaqim. He, te he is suggesting that we should be praying that this Rob, this guy, this teacher, this bestower of knowledge, this bestower of grace, this bestower of, of, of forgiveness, of mercy, we ask then that he guides us to the path that is correct. We usually say guide us on the straight path, right? We're asking him to, gu to guide us to the path that truly has guidance to lead us in the direction that is pleasing to him. That's what we're saying. Because we understand that if we truly want to be in sync with God, the best help to get there is from him. Make sense? Guide us to the path that is straight. And we clarify, said, not the path of those who incur your wrath. That's, that's what we say in translation. But what we're saying, <clears throat> even, even more, 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 more directly, is that don't let us get caught up in being some people who thought they was doing right. Don't let us be people who were sincere and got misguided because we was following the wrong guidance. We don't want to be those people who, who, you know, Allah says in Quran that there are some people who go through their whole life. This is paraphrasing an ayat in Quran. They go through their whole life thinking that they were doing the right thing. 
And then when they stand before Allah, they realize that they were not. And at that point, there's nothing they can do about it. And God says, is this one of the worst tragedies that will happen to us? That we could be somebody who went through our whole life thinking we was doing the right thing, thinking we was doing good. And it turns out that we really weren't. So if you understand that that is a possibility, who should you be praying to to guide you so it's not? Allah, you should be praying to God, your creator, to give you the correct guidance so you can stay on the path that is pleasing to him. And so we say, not only not the path of those who incur your wrath or go astray, uh, 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 we say, we say, or go wallet darling. We say we want to be with those that, that, that receive your help and your mercy, etc. But we don't want to be amongst those who go astray. Uh, uh, and really, it's wallet darling. We talked before about how in the outer, in the outer B, in the language, you don't really just say wallet darling. The Arabic language instructions is that this wallet darling is it, it, stretched out, but it's also pronounced with like a wavy, like a, uh, the appearance of something that goes up and down, right? What we should take from that is that people don't normally be on the guided path and then instantly they way over there. It is a slow, gradual process off the straight path and you don't even see yourself slipping. That's what happens. I, I can't speak for y'all again, but I can only speak for me. Imam Suleiman, I can speak for me. I have in my lifetime been in places that were dark and ugly and disappointing to my own self and my own soul. And then I said, how in the hell did I get here? How can I be here? While it darling. Slow, gradual process. Unconscious. Don't realize it. That I was slipping the whole time. So I wrote a song. I'm slipping fast and I think I might fail. <laughs> One day realizing that I had moved far from where I should have been. Subhanallah. So God is telling us that we should be praying to him to keep us from being in that space where we become wallet darling and then ultimately end up receiving his wrath. This is Al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And again, if Al-Fatiha encompasses this whole of this book, I only just touched the surface. I'm sharing this with you for this reason. Fahim was saying when I walked in how important it is for us as we move forward to make the Quran the first basis for how we understand, how we interpret, how we take in the what, what, what we say is important for us as Muslims. Our first, our first place that we look shouldn't be what Imam Suleiman said. It should not be what Imam Waratuddin Muhammad said. It should not be what the scholars say. It shouldn't even be what Muhammad the prophet said, peace be upon him. It should be what God says. It is reported. It's reported. And what people teach us Muhammad the prophet, peace be upon him, said that Muhammad the prophet said to the people, don't write down what I say that come from me. <laughs> Only write down what I tell you came from God. Because I don't want people getting what I said and what God said mixed up and people finding themselves being held to account what came from my own self. As opposed to what came from God. So even in that report, the idea is that your first responsibility to yourself is what comes from God. That should be your first, first point of reference. 
Okay. If you didn't hear anything else that I said that made any sense to you, I want you to keep in mind that as, as a believer, as a Muslim, as somebody who says they're adherent to Islam, your first place is what God says. It should be always.